Hello, my name is Christopher DeLay. I'm a transactional PFE based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And this is uh, part one in a series of uh, discussions on PKI. The purpose of these videos is for PKI training. Um, so this first section will cover cryptography. Cryptography is a very um, you know, important piece to PKI and it's something that's often overlooked by people you know, either when they're doing training for PKI or um, learning about PKI. So it's an important topic to uh, understand, especially because we use the keys that are actually in certificates to do a number of the functions. So um, we'll kind of go through a lot of different um, cryptography concepts here. And um, as far as what we'll be covered, we'll be covering uh, symmetric cryptography, asymmetric cryptography, hybrid um, cryptography, hash algorithms, and digital signatures. So first, is uh, symmetric cryptography. So um, with symmetric cryptography you basically have uh, one key and that um, same key is being used to encrypt and both encrypt and decrypt data. And obviously for that to happen between two parties that same key has to be shared between the two parties. Um, and of course security like a lot of things is based on keeping some information private in this case keeping that shared key private and not sharing it with other individuals. And kind of, that kind of brings up the idea that you need some sort of secure channel to exchange the keys in order for there to be any kind of security. So uh, if two people are sharing keys, there has to be some kind of um, indirect way for them to share keys, you know, and it's kind of a secure channel so that an attacker can't actually get that key while it's in transit and then, you know, be able to use that key to either encrypt or decrypt data. So symmetric cryptography is typically used for um, encryption and um, definitely for authentication. So those are two of the major things that we see it used for. Um, here's an example of some symmetric cryptography in work. So if we take a look at this, Alice and Bob um, are going to try to uh, basically uh, encrypt information to each other. So Alice has a symmetric key and Bob has a symmetric key. And we're not going to really talk about how they derive that key, or you know, or how they're sharing that, or how that key got in both of, to both of those individuals. But they both have a, a symmetric key in this example, and they have some sort of data that they want to encrypt. So what Alice does is Alice goes ahead and encrypts that data with her um, symmetric key. And now once it's encrypted, you can feel somewhat safe transmitting that data over like a public medium like in that like the internet for example and so she sends that information to Bob Bob is able to use his uh, symmetric key which is the same key Alice used um, just his copy of it and he's able to decrypt that data and that's pretty straightforward of how symmetric cryptography works so the main advantages to um, symmetric cryptography are that it's um, fast and secure. Well, I mean, obviously it's secure, but the key thing here is that it's fast. That compared to um, some other types of cryptography we'll talk about later, it's comp it's a uh, com computationally inexpensive. I guess would be the best way to put it compared to um, some of those other forms of cryptography that we'll talk about. Um, some of the disadvantages is you have a key exchange issue. So you have two users that are using the same key and there needs to be some way for them to be able to get that key to each other securely and so that's kind of a problem with symmetric cryptography. And there's the issue of key management it becomes very problematic because if you're some, if you're encrypting data to a number of different people then you have a you have a key for each of those individuals that you're communicating with. And so how do you manage those keys is it can become problematic. And so there's no method for non-repudiation. So in the example before with Alice and Bob, both Alice and Bob have a copy of the symmetric key. So if they were to use that key to try to sign something, for example, you wouldn't be able to tell whether that was signed by Alice or Bob because they're using the same key. So there's really no way that it can really be used for non-repudiation. In other words, saying that I know this came from Alice or I know it was signed by Alice or or something like that. Um, and so we talked a little bit about key exchange, key management issues. 
Um, I mean, here we talk about a basic formula that's used to determine how many symmetric keys you would have in an environment. So in an environment with just, you know, 100 users, which would be a pretty small environment, especially, you know, compared to what we're usually used to dealing with, you would need to manage, you know, around 5,000 keys to have secure, securely exchange data between these, those 100 users. The question is, this is really problematic. How do, how do you manage that? Well, there actually is a way that is done today. I mean, if you look at Kerberos, our Active Directory and Domain Controller is basically use Kerberos for authentication. So, uh, you know, what domain controllers actually do as far as in, in their role as a KDC is they store long-term passwords for users and computers, so they manage that part of it, but they also create session keys um, when you're trying to authenticate to a service. So it, it, it definitely can be done and is done with Kerberos today. Here's some examples of some symmetric ciphers that you may have run across. Um, RC4, I believe, is an older one. Um, DES and AES. DES is somewhat older, too. Um, and um, AES is pretty common when you see used today. So now we're going to talk about asymmetric cryptography. And this is called, also called public key cryptography. So you can kind of see how this starts to delve into the area, area of kind of PKI. and the idea between between certificates and this public uh, key cryptography um, will become pretty evident soon. So I'm um, not a math major, um, but the basic idea between uh, about public key public key cryptography is you have two keys, and essentially they're mathematically related. And so if you encrypt data with one key can be decrypted with the second key and vice versa. And so it's uh, so that's basically the function of how it works. The main mathematical issues behind it is basically that if you have possession of like the of one key for example, it's very difficult to, to, to actually derive what that second key is even though they're related. And so that's where the security lies within the public key cryptography. So public key cryptography is based on two keys. So there's an idea of a public key um, that you can share with everybody and they can use that to communicate with you. And then there's the idea of a private key. And so you use that um, basically on your end and it's kept um, secret from everyone else. And so basically, like, like I said before, uh, data encrypted with a public key can be decrypted with a private key and vice versa, you know, do the relationship between the two keys. And uh, security is based on keeping the private key secure, and I think that's something that's often overlooked. Um, all the security in public key cryptography is based on the idea of keeping the private key secure. And, and, and so, I mean, that's definitely one of the issues you'll definitely have to work with if you do work with PK on a regular basis is what do we do to secure those private keys. And security is also based on being able to verify the identity associated with the public key. And how that comes into play is if some if Alice were to encrypt something to Bob using public key cryptography, how does Bob know that it's actually Alice that did the encryption, right? So uh, not only the fact that the keys were together, but yet there needs to be some way to verify that that key belongs to an actual identity. So public key can, cryptography can be used for key exchange. Um, it can be used for key agreement. These first two things are ways to either share symmetric keys or to um, come to an agreement on a symmetric key. It can be used for encryption and it can be used for obviously authentication and probably the most important well not the most important, but one of the most significant is non-repudiation. So we'll um, see how that works in a little bit. So assuming that Alice and Bob now want to encrypt data with each other, this would be the public key cryptography example of how that would work. So Alice is going to have some data and she's going to want to encrypt it and send it to Bob. So what Alice does is she gets her data and she actually goes ahead and encrypts it with 
Bob's public key. Once the data is um, encrypted with Bob's public key, uh, she can then transmit it to Bob, however she's going to do that. And then Bob actually uses his private key to go ahead and decrypt that data. And so you see the difference there between that and um, symmetric cryptography, where in symmetric cryptography there was a need to you know kind of share the key here there's a the need to share the one the public key but that doesn't impact the security of being able to send information to Bob because Bob's not using that same key to decrypt it so what are the advantages of public key cryptography um, so the key, public key cryptography can be used for key agreement and key exchange which now gives us a way to share those symmetric keys that we talked about earlier or to you know create them in a key agreement protocol and it can be used for non-repudiation and, and so basically the idea here is that Alice can send something to Bob and Bob can be asserted and basically Bob can believe that it was actually Alice that sent that document or that data that way if Alice ever says I didn't actually send it he can, the cryptography can be used to prove that she actually did. Public key cryptography disadvantages. Um, so a lot of the keys used now are RSA keys that are used for public key cryptography and they require relatively large key sizes um, for uh, to, in order to be secure. There are some newer um, newer uh, you know elliptical curve crypto algorithms that require less smaller key sizes to get the same level of security as RSA keys but there still is um, you know a key size issue and it's computationally expensive so if you were trying to encrypt a large amount of data do like bulk encryption public key cryptography would not be the way to go in terms of doing that examples of um, asymmetric ciphers. RSA is the one um, you see most commonly today. Um, Diffie-Hellman is actually a key agreement algorithm so that's used to kind of um, basically create a cre key between two parties, a symmetric key that can be used for encryption. Um, and then you have some of the newer um, asymmetric ciphers like DSA, elliptic curve DSA, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. And so what you'll see is RSA is commonly used today. Um, over time, you'll see, um, P, at least from a PKI standpoint, DSA and ECDSA and ECDH being used more commonly. So here's one example of how key exchange could work. Um, so if Bob has a public and a private key, um, they, and Alice, Alice wants to share data with Bob. First, they want to basically um, create a symmetric key and be able to sh share that symmetric key in order to be able to encrypt data later. So what Alice does is she goes ahead and she creates the symmetric keys, let's say, on her end. And then what she does is she basically um, grabs Bob's public key, encrypts that symmetric key she created. and sends that over to Bob and then Bob can decrypt that with his private key and then he can go ahead and use that symmetric key and now the two can basically use that symmetric key to encrypt data so kind of doing the symmetric cryptography example again Alice then creates her data encrypts it with the symmetric key and then she's able to send that over to Bob and then Bob can decrypt it with the symmetric key and again, the reason for doing this is, A, it allows you to share the symmetric key. So you might say, well, why don't they just use uh, you know, the public and private key to do this? Well, we talked earlier about how um, public key cryptography uses large keys and is very you know, expensive from a CPU standpoint. So for a lot of, and due to the fact that it's expensive, it's also... Um, public key cryptography is also much slower than symmetric cryptography so 
you know, in order to save cycles and to do things quicker, um, typically symmetric key cryptography is used for um, encryption and decryption purposes. So next.